Welcome to 11.1. We're going to start solving equations using addition and subtraction. All right, so x plus 3 equals 7, right? That's the same as blank plus 3 equals 7. So we could do that in our head, I think. And what plus 3 equals 7? Well, 4. Now, if it was fill in the blank in first or second grade, you would have put 4. But now you're going to write x equals 4. Not a big difference. On the next one, it is 19 equals blank minus 10. Now, I get some people who think maybe it's 9, but 9 minus 10 is negative 1. So that's not right. What minus 10 is 19? It is what? It's 29. 29 minus 10 equals 19, and we're going to write x equals 9. And the last one, yeah, so as the numbers get bigger and there tends to be borrowing, it's harder to figure out what might fill in the blank. Now, you, you could do it various ways, but with the way we're going to do it, whenever an equation has a minus sign in it, as in minus 27, we're going to add 27 to both sides. I don't think this is the first time you've seen that, but if it is, you are going to write that plus. You're not going to write 27. You're going to write plus 27 twice. And the reason you do that is you're going to cross this out, and we'll go over why in a second. And then on that side, you will get the answer. And so you get x equals 4 plus 7 is 11 x equals 81. Yeah, because 81 minus 27 is the one that equals 54. So there's another one. In this one, if it's add, we will subtract that amount from both sides, and that will give us what x equals. First, we have to do some vocabulary. First lesson in a new unit. We're going to learn something called inverse operations. So 13 plus 5 minus 5. Well, 13 plus 5 is 18. 18 minus 5, right? Order of operations. You do the one on the left first. Well, that's interesting. We got right back where we started. And the reason we got right back where we started is because adding 5 and subtracting 5 undo each other. They cancel each other out in, in one sense. They are called inverse operations. So let's... I switch the order here this time we subtracted first and then added but the same thing happens right you get right back where you started because subtracting two and adding two are inverse operations here so what's x plus four minus four it's always going to be x because adding four and subtracting four are inverse operations So now we're going to learn something called the properties of equality. Now, if you open up any textbook, this will be written there four times. There's an addition property of equality, and there is a subtraction property of equality, and we're going to go over those today. And then the next lesson, the multiplying and dividing properties of equality. I'm only going to make you write it but once today. And so the properties of equality say that any operation, add, subtract, multiply, or divide, done to one side of an equation must be repeated exactly on the other side. So we're going to understand that. So is 4 plus 7 equal 11? Is that true? Yes, it's true. You could write yes or true. Now what I did, now the equal sign is the divider between the two sides. Equations have sides. And so the border between the two sides is the equal sign. You can write the border in if it helps you see it. And in this one, I subtracted 7 from both sides. Let's see if the equation is still true. 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 minus 7 is what? 4. This is what we did on the other last screen, right? Adding and subtracting 7 are inverse operations. We did 11 minus 7 on that side. Is that true? Yes. If you subtract 7 from both sides of that equation, the equation is still true. Now, this one, I subtracted 7 from one of the sides. Well, on this side, we have 11. On this side, now we have 4. Is this true? No. And this is what the problem is, is that when you write minus 7 on one side, because you're, you're thinking all of my, my whole purpose is to get the answer, uh, you're, making, you're writing things on your paper that are false. And you don't want to be writing things on your paper which are false, number one. But number two is we're going to get to equations in 
not right away, but in the future, you're going to get to equations this year that if you try and do it this way, you get wrong answers, right? So the idea, if you have in your head that, oh, I don't need, I know a teacher told me to write it twice, but I don't need to write it twice. You, you don't understand where you're headed. You're going to write everything twice and you're going to do so because the properties of equality. All right, so this is the procedure and I would like to see this procedure exactly this way. To solve what this is a one step equation, writing things to both sides counts as one step. And so let's do that. So if it's add 15, you subtract 15. And you do that because x plus 15 minus 15, right, equals x. So th those cross out and you get x by itself. That is really your goal. Yeah, you th if you think your goal is to get this number over here, not really. And you'll see that as we get more complicated. Your goal is to get x by itself. Now, once you get x by itself, the number you need for the solution, the answer is called the solution, will appear automatically as long as you're concentrating on getting x by itself. So you've done it to one side of the equal sign. You must do it to the other side. Now, notice I didn't say do it to the 37. You do it to the entire side. Now, there's only one thing on that side because these are easier, but there will be many things on in the future on the other side and you will still do it to the entire side so 7 minus 5 is 2 3 minus 1 is 2 and the only number x could be is 22 and so this is called the solution it is the one number that makes that true this is an equation because it has an equal sign and there's only one number that makes it true 22 so here you can move things around, right? X is not always going to be on the left side of the equal sign, but the procedure will always start in the same place. If you see an add eight, you're going to subtract eight from that side to cross it out and that side. Now don't just write eight, write that you're subtracting eight, cross out the eights, please cross out the eights. Again, when things get more complicated, there are going to be lots of things to keep track of. You want to keep track of what you've crossed out. So now X is on this side, nothing wrong with X being on that side. Equal sign means the two sides are the same. So the two sides are the same. So we're gonna leave them X right over there. It's not a problem. 17 minus eight, nine equals X, perfectly good solution. All right, so when it was add, you subtracted from both sides. So if it's subtract, what do you think you do to both sides? Now you add to both sides, X minus nine plus nine, X for all inverse operations. You do it to one side of this equal sign, you do it to the other. 43 plus 9 is 52. And we're going to put decimals in this today. So it's minus 1.2. You can add 1.2 or 1 and 2 tenths. You're going to line up your decimal points there, right? And it is 39.2. The truth is, as the number gets bigger, that this procedure here you're going to practice it so many times and as the numbers get bigger it's actually faster to do the procedure than try to do it in your head all right so let's do the procedure what plus 13 equals 10. well if you're thinking three that no that won't work well let's see if you add 13 you subtract 13 from both sides x plus 13 minus x. Now, 10 minus 13, you can't actually do it right there, right? Because when you subtract, you always have to put the bigger number up top, right? But the answer is not 3. It's 10 minus 13. So it is negative 3. The only number that makes that equation through true is negative 3. Next. So it's subtract 22. So we're going to add 22 to both sides. So it's negative 22 plus 22. What's negative 2 plus 22? Positive 20 is the only number that makes that true. Subtract 2.6 from both sides. And so negative 8.4 minus 2.6. I'm going to write this out a little bit. That's the same as adding negative 2.6, right? So they're both, we're going to add these up, 8.4 and 2.6. We're going to do a little side work. Oh, and they're both negative, so it's negative 9 is what makes that true. All right, for perimeter, you add up the side. So we're going to write an equation. So the, you're not just going to get the answer. It says write an equation. So you've got to write an equation. So 
If you add up the sides, it's 11 plus 11 plus 11, and the total perimeter is 35. So we're being told the perimeter, and you're working backwards to find the length. And this is a major use of equations, is that things that you learned in first through sixth grade will now be asked you backwards, right? You've been asked how to calculate a perimeter many times, add up the sides. Now you're going to be given things like what used to be an answer and work backwards. And equations are great for that. Because now we have 11 plus 11 plus 11 equals 35. Well, that's the same as 11 plus 22 equals 35. We've written an equation. Now we're going to solve that equation. And we're going to subtract 22 from both sides. And L equals 13. And this is inches. It's a word problem. And that is our solution. When you solve an equation, you get a solution. Now, could you have figured it out with, without an equation? Yes, but these are going to get more complicated. And you want to practice while things are still easy. Okay, let's see if you understand. Because now you have to do it with just letters. What's x equal? Well, it's plus m, so you subtract m from both sides. So what does x equal? It equals v minus m. So no matter, if x plus m equals v, that means x will always equal whatever v ends up being minus m. Let's do another one of those. All right, so x minus b equals c. Well, it's minus b. You add b to both sides. So x equals c plus b. Could you write b plus c? Yes, you can because of commutative property, right? Addition has commutative property. The last one, basically, that was the only way to write it. Ooh, x minus c. So you still add c to both sides. And what do we get? We get negative d plus c equals x. Typically, we would turn that around to c minus d. But if you wrote for me, both of those are equivalent, right? You put the c for it because alphabetical order. But well, that's for expressions, not for equations. You can write either one. So let's practice. So subtract 6.5 from both sides. And we do a little borrowing there. 13 minus 6 is 7. And I'm getting 37.2 equals x. All right, so now we have negative 15 there. That's not subtract 15, but what do you think you do? Yeah, you add 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0, and 0 plus x is x. So you're adding 15 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 15, 11. Here you're adding 5.2 to both sides. And negative 9.6 plus 5.2. So we have to do 9.6 minus 5.2. We have to find the difference between those two. And they're extra negatives, so it's negative 4.4. Be careful. There, with negatives, you are going to have some side work, right? You don't want to do this right here because you're adding 5.2 and because the top one is negative. It's different, isn't it? Here, we're solving for x, so it's negative a. Look at the one right above it. If it's negative a, we're adding a to both sides. So x equals b plus a, which since the commutative property, you could write also a plus b. Either of those is great. Perimeter, so there's a missing length plus two other sides, and the perimeter is 60. So we're writing, if you're asked to write an equation, you must write it. It's part of the points for the question. So I'm going to add the 16s, right? And the reason I'm doing that is so it looks like all the others, right? This is now a one-step equation. You've been solving one-step equations. We're going to go to five, six, seven steps in a little bit, but not yet. So now we're going to solve this equation. Subtract 32, L the length. I'm getting, what, 28 inches. Good luck on the homework.